I took this picture of the Orion Nebula in just 12 minutes with no editing at all and it only took a couple of minutes to set up. If you're looking for something portable, high quality and easy to use then the ZWO Seastar is a genuine game changer for astrophotographers. But I'm not going to pretend that it's perfect and we'll get onto more of that later. Let me tell you a little bit about why the ZWO Seastar has been my go-to telescope for the last 12 months. I've got a busy job, I've got a couple of young kids and I have a lot of cloudy nights. And realistically, when you combine all of those things together in my current situation, I often don't have the time, all the energy, all the patience to go and set up my big deep sky rig up outside in the garden and start imaging. So the Sea Star has been a great way for me to keep doing astrophotography, even when I haven't had the time or energy to do any other kind of astrophotography. Now that's just me in my situation, of course, everyone's situation is different. So for a few examples, you know, if you're someone that has mobility issues and therefore having a, you know, big, heavy deep sky rig is perhaps not very, very realistic. Or you might be a complete beginner to astrophotography and you're just wanting to test the waters of what's achievable. Is it something that you're really going to be that interested in further down the line before jumping into buying a big, you know, expensive deep sky astrophotography rig? Or maybe you're an experienced astrophotographer and you just want this fun little gadget on the side. Maybe you travel a lot. It's really simple and lightweight to take with you so it's great if you're somebody that is always on the move. So the Sea Star is great for all sorts of scenarios but it's not trying to compete with you know proper dedicated deep sky astrophotography setups. I think it, it goes alongside to complement those. You're absolutely not going to replace something like the telescope uh, that you see behind me and you know and all of the gear that comes with that with the Sea Star. That's just unrealistic and, and to be fair if that is the way that the market started going, then I think people will very quickly stop manufacturing those telescopes because they'll just be no longer needed. I just don't see that happening. I think the Sea Star sits alongside dedicated deep sky astrophotography gear, and I think there's a space for that in the market, and it opens up astrophotography to all sorts of people, whether that is because of you know a lack of money, I've already spoken about mobility issues, you know, time, whatever it may be the Seastar is a great alternative to having a fully dedicated setup. You will absolutely be able to take much, much better pictures with a setup like that that you see behind me and you'll see across uh, loads of videos on my channel if you're familiar with my channel. But that doesn't make the Seastar any less fun to use or any sort of less good. It's still a brilliant little gadget to have in your astrophotography arsenal, I think. I'll quickly run through some of the high level specs of the Sea Star. I'm not going to go into loads of great detail because you can read these easily enough for yourself online. It has a focal length of 250mm. It only weighs three kilograms so the portability is a really massive selling point for this i think it uses the imx 462 sensor which experienced astrophotographers will be familiar with in other cameras of course and for the lens it has triplet apochromatic optics that's a really hard thing to say so i think you can think of the sea star as a camera an autofocuser a telescope and an asi air plus if you're familiar with that all in one compact unit, you know, because that is exactly what it is. It's not just here to nip outside, take a really quick image of the moon that sort of looks half okay and then and then bring it back in and think, well, why have I wasted my money on this? It's absolutely not that at all. It is specced to be a deep sky astrophotography rig as well as uh, moon photography, landscape photography even. It also comes with a solar filter so that you can take pictures of the sun. Never try and take a picture of the sun without the solar filter fitted first. And it has a built-in light pollution filter that you can switch on or off in just the press of a button on the app. Speaking of the app, it's really slick, it's really responsive, it's really intuitive to use. Those of you that have used the ASI Air Plus, which you can probably see behind me somewhere around there, uh, it will feel very, very familiar to that. Uh, it's something that I think is just really simple to use. You don't need any tutorials to show you how to use it. It's very, very obvious. And the setup of the Sea Star couldn't be any easier. Literally, take the Sea Star out the carry case, screw the carbon fibre tripod into the bottom, turn it on, and uh, choose your target in the app. Sea Star does the rest for you. Which kind of leads me on to my next point, and, and one that I think could potentially be viewed as negativity, but you can, you can sort of flip it on its head and, and see it as a positive thing as well. I think for me, these smart telescopes don't have the sense of satisfaction that you get with a deep sky astrophotography rig. You know, if you watch my last video of uh, trying to take a picture of this sun, uh, that was, you know, it's a really complicated setup, something I'd never tried before. Uh, and it's 
not that hard to do once you've figured it all out, but when you're trying to do it for the first time, it is quite complicated. You know, the C star takes away all of that complication, in, not just for solar photography, but for every other astrophotography type as well. So uh, as I said, you literally stand it on a level surface, turn it on, select your target in the app, and it kind of does everything else for you. And that's great because it means that astrophotography is suddenly open for everybody to be able to do. It doesn't matter what skill level you are or, or anything like that. And I think that's absolutely fantastic. But what you don't get is that sense of satisfaction of you know, choosing all of the gear um, that's available across the market, getting your rigs set up, getting familiar with things like polar alignment and all of your camera settings and focusing and things like that. Getting all of those images stacked in Deep Sky Stacker or PixInsight, whatever you might be using, and then going through your post-processing to come up with the best possible image that you can for the gear uh, and integration time that you've got. You don't get that satisfaction with not just the C star, but any smart telescope. So you could view that as negative, um, I do like to think it of as more of a positive thing though. I, I sort of see it from both sides. Now, I think for me to be able to live in a time where I can just take this telescope that costs about 550 quid, pick it up, plonk it outside, turn it on and take an image. I think there's something really special about that. Um, and I don't want to turn that into a, into a negative thing. So in terms of some example images, because that's probably what everybody really wants to see, here is an image that I took of the sun uh, within just a couple of minutes. As I say, I turned it on popped the solar filter in, told it that I wanted to image the sun, it slew to the sun, it took a picture, this is the output of that. All of the images that you're gonna see here are not images that I have edited in any software at all. So all that I've done is the live stacking that's available in the C star. Beyond that, I've done absolutely nothing whatsoever. So that's an image of the sun. This is a picture of the moon. Again, I think you can take better pictures than this of the moon. I even think you can take a better picture of the moon than this if you have a big Dobsonian telescope with a smartphone adapter held up to the eyepiece and take a picture with your phone. I think you can take a better picture of the moon doing that than you can with the sea star. But that's not to say that this image isn't great. I still think this is a, a great image and one that literally took all of 30 seconds to do. Uh, it's uh, you know, I just think that's incredible. Speaking of smartphone adapters and Dobsonians, I have a, a video coming up of me um, using a smartphone adapter to take a picture of the moon with my massive Dobsonian that I bought recently. So be sure to subscribe to the channel so that you don't miss out on that video that's coming up soon. This is a picture of the Cygnus wall in the North American Nebula. NGC 7000 is the North American Nebula. I don't know, I can't remember if the Cygnus wall has its own designator. I'll put it down here if, if it does. This was taken over 30 minutes and this was a really hot night over the summer last year. I had no astro dark, and as I say, I haven't edited this at all. So you can see the image is probably quite noisy, but it's 30 minutes of integration time, and I've done no editing whatsoever. I, and I, I genuinely think that's mind blowing. Next up, we've got the Dumbbell Nebula M27. This is an image that I took, this was the first image that I ever took of the sea star, actually on the day that I got it, uh, because for some reason there was a clear sky on the day that I got it. And this is a grand total of 11 minutes of integration time. Now, if I took my massive expensive setup behind me and set all of that up and took an image in just 11 minutes, it really wouldn't look any better than this, I've got to be honest. So the fact that the C star has been able to produce this in 11 minutes really shows you the capability of this. I've got loads more pictures that I've taken with the C star, but these are the sort of ones that I've taken that I think are probably the, the, the best. Where I think the C star can fall down a bit is that on the fainter targets, it's not performed uh, quite as well. And I think that's to be expected. There are gonna be limitations to the C star. I don't wanna hold anything against it for, for that. I think if you're looking to do some really faint objects um, with the C star, then I, I think you're probably gonna set yourself up for disappointment. Um, but for the, the brighter targets, the more obvious targets that people do in, in astrophotography, the, the C star will, will fit right alongside any deep sky rig that's out there. Now, in terms of battery life, because I haven't mentioned that yet, so ZWO claim that the battery life can last for six hours. I have to say that I think that is pretty accurate. I haven't run my um, C-Star for a continuous six hours. I have run it for four to five hours and there was still some battery left. I can't remember exactly how much, but there was still some battery left. That was during the um, warmer nights though. On the colder nights, the battery is going to struggle more. Naturally, any battery will struggle when it's a cold winter, you know, minus five sort of evening. Uh, and that's to be expected. 
even then you can still easily get three hours out of the sea star in those conditions so i think battery life isn't really a huge concern and as you can see i've produced what i think are some pretty decent images in a very very small window of integration time so if you're pushing the sea star much longer than that then it will cope absolutely no problem at all in terms of charging it, it couldn't be easier. It is just a USB cable. So I think there's a reason why a lot of people are talking about the C-Star and why there are so many people that have given the C-Star a lot of really positivity and a lot of good reviews out there online. That's not to say it's perfect. It's not going to replace your dedicated deep sky astrophotography rig, but I would challenge anybody that owns a C-Star or wants to own a C-Star not to have a great time imaging, whether that's during the day for some um, solar photography or whether that's at night doing a full deep sky image. I, I challenge you not to have fun doing it because it, it really is such a great little toy to have a play around with. I will leave some links in the description down below for where you can pick up a C-Star. It's on sale in the UK for 550 quid and I think you will struggle to find a better deep sky rig for 550 quid than something like a C-Star. Let me know in the comments down below if you've got a ZWO C-Star. Let me know what your thoughts are and whether you agree with the points that I've made in this video if you're not already subscribed to the channel then please do so uh, and also give the video a thumbs up because that really helps it spread to more people and that helps me out so thank you very much for doing that my name is nick you've been watching astro exploring and i will see you in the next video